What's going on, guys? It's FBS Kyle here, and this is Painkiller Already. Wings of Redemption this week has anal fissures, so I will not. I will be, you know, doing the introduction here. And uh, we got Dan the Man, Woody's buddy, and we have Paintball Kitty as a guest as well. So it's going to be a good one. All Kyle right, is drunk as shit. Working on the stream right now, so. Yeah, for some reason, uh, Wings' anal fissures prevented him from doing the intro, so Kyle stepped up. I'm not yes, sure. Yes, are really interfering with his, uh, his <laughs> intro. <laughs> All right, Dan, are you ready? I, I'm hypothetical ready. Hypothetical situation, hypothetical situation. You Hypothetic. are married. All right, you're married in this hypothetical situation. Gotcha. You switch bodies with your wife. Would you have sex just to check it out? Would I have uh, with sex with who? Sex with myself? Yourself, or right? You're married. With me? You switch bodies, and now right. you're her. So would you have sex with you? Sex with me? Um, that, you know, that sounds very gay. And no offense to everybody, but I just don't, I don't know if I could go there. Dude, Wait, like you haven't had sex with you a million times already. I, 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 <laughs> look, I, am, I am a divorced guy. I have sex with myself all the time. It is, <laughs> it is sort of what I do very well. <laughs> But, yeah, I don't know if I could go there, man. There's just something about having sex with um, a guy, even if I'm in some way, a female's body. I just can't do it. It's just how, it's not my thing. How about this? Would you give yourself a handy in the shower? Would I give myself a handy, you know, as a woman? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, and I think where he's going with that is, you know, right. you do that now. W- weren't we just talking about how this is a classy podcast? <laughs> <laughs> Wings has been watching you. He knows your habits, okay? (laughs) (laughs) All right, Paintball, Kitty, uh, same question. So, of course, reverse for you. You're you're a guy at this point. Uh, Would would you hit that? No, but I'd go and piss off a wall just because I could. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Oh, don't tell me you haven't done that as a female. Come on. No, seriously, I haven't. I would want to go and, like, piss in the woods as well. You can't do like, that already? That's something that I really hate you guys for. Like, you know, you'll be walking through the woods or whatever, you're hiking and, you know, you really need to go and you're like, oh, it's only a couple more miles, so you hold it while your little brother goes and takes a piss in the bush. That really annoyed me. But have you not done the squat? You know, I think everything no. done that in the woods or something. No, never. Really? Honestly, I never have. Wow. What you have to keep in mind, love, is she's very British. <laughs> <laughs> But no, I really, if I had a penis, I wouldn't care about the sex or anything. I'd just want to piss standing up. I bet, I bet a, a plate, a, a pallet of snow would give you like an orgasm. <laughs> you draw your name in it. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> I, oh, gosh. <laughs> I wouldn't have gone that far. But <laughs> Is there any way to go back to the anal fissures? I mean, I, I don't know. Wow. No, no more anal. Class. All right, let, let's just make a rule right now. Yeah, let's just class it up, please. From henceforth, there shall be no more discussion of anal fishes <laughs> oh, on Jesus. the Angel Already podcast. And I was a dumbass that asked the question about what the heck an anal fissure even was. Yeah, and told dude, me I can't believe you asked that question. In incredible detail. And I was like, wow, that's a, a lot of detail, and I am just threw up on my mouth a little bit. I was like, you missed the pre-podcast. A big box of anal fissure worms, okay? Oh. Like, you just fucked up. Oh, you had to introduce worms gonna tell into you. it now? No, there's yeah, there's worms. Oh my god! <laughs> Big one. Mm. Next topic. <laughs> Next topic, please. Woody. Yeah. <laughs> All Dan, right. Dan, let's tell um, divorce stories. Divorce stories. Yeah, there's plenty of divorce stories. Where do you want to start? You want to start where I sort of landed in your house. That works. As, yeah. So. Um, so do you so want to talk I, about what led up to that? Yeah. So I've I lived the script. I, I married my wife or I met my wife in college and figured, well, shit, let's, you know, what everyone gets married, you know, and you or meet your, your mate in college and everyone was getting married, you know, so I proposed early on and this has been the woman that I've been with since I've literally 20 or 21 years old. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the marriage has always been a little bit more difficult than probably it needed to be. And, you know, we ended up shitting out a bunch of kids, which made things a little bit more difficult. I've actually got four daughters. I love them. I don't, I don't think that's how you do that. I, yeah. <laughs> oh, really? That's- I don't know what you're taught in your state for sex education, but typically kids are not shat out. Yeah, I sort of skipped <laughs> class. I don't know. After about three kids, I'm like, how does this keep happening to me? I don't get it. I, I just- <laughs> 
But okay. yeah, I have four, four wonderful daughters. And towards the end of, of my marriage, I, I found that my wife would, um, this is around the Facebook time. So she got involved with Facebook and she would end up just withdrawing. And I'm spending a lot of time, you know, by herself. And, you know, me being the kind of guy that sort of doesn't get it. But then after a while, when I, when I sort of figure things out, my antenna goes up. And what, long story short, uh, so she, allow me I, to interrupt. So Dan yeah. works in IT and in information technology like I do. And, um, you know, if <laughs> compared to his wife, he just has it all over her with regards to you know, computer prowess. You don't ever, I mean, and I'm going to tell my girls this, you, you're not going to be able to get away with the jack shit when it comes to <laughs> computer. I will figure it out. I'm, I'm smarter than you when it comes to computers in general. And, uh, and my wife, especially, and, you know, I, I just figured out, and I, I'm sort of, sort of, you know, ashamed of this. But I would like, I would scan the network for what, what she was doing. But really, what she was doing was trading semi nude pictures of herself with some guy that she went to high school with, and he was living could, up in Maine. Could you see the pictures of the guy? I did, and the guy was. Um, this is a funny story. The guy that really, God, yeah. I'm ashamed, Dan. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I, it, <laughs> Well, it was, Kyle, how come you want pictures of the guy and not his wife or ex-wife? I think yeah. he's apologizing for being that guy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, oh, I, I didn't even get that. Go on, go on. So, <laughs> yeah, so uh, I did this big elaborate thing. I, you know, for me, I just wanted to find out what was going on. As a, a man would have just confronted, maybe smacked her a few times, but you know, I sort of, you know, instead, uh, you know, Dan's I, like, oh look, she's. Sending her passwords in clear text. I will have all the mails in there forwarded will, to my account will, so I can I keep up. And- details. I mean, I, I set up a Gmail account where this shit was forwarded to. I mean, it was a really elaborate scheme. And I was driving myself crazy because I was seeing sort of this in real time. So I ended up going out. I think it was like NFL like playoffs were going on. And, you know, I was going to go out drinking with my buddies. And she's like, oh, go. Go with your friends. Don't worry about it. I'll be here. Fine. You know, and I, and I, you know, I knew what she was doing and but i just went anyway and ended up coming back and trying to bust her uh, in the middle of the act i don't even know what the act is i don't know what she was doing with this material but i knew that she was had this thing with this guy so, so i end up home i'm driving the- home through this small town in north carolina and i'm just i'm out of my mind and i'm just just buzzing through town and this cop is coming in the opposite direction and he ends up I guess it's simple math to figure out how fast someone's going. He ends up pulling me over, and he, he walks up, and he goes, Dan, or he goes, sir, you know, do you know how fast we're going? And I, said, I go, sir, I'm about to go home and catch my wife in the middle of, a, of like, an affair, I think is what, how I described it. And uh, he goes, okay, well, you know, license and registration. So he goes back to his car, checks it out, brings it back, and he goes, you know, I just, sir, I'm going to let you go. You have enough problems on your hand right now, on your hands. But I don't want to read about you in the newspaper tomorrow. You know, so he lets me go. I end up going back. Uh, nothing's happening, but I end up finding pictures on the camera of her kind of in various states of undress. And but there's more. The pictures weren't on the camera. Oh, the pictures, yeah, that's a good point. So I... <laughs> Yeah, I don't know much how, how much time we have here. The pictures, there was no pictures on the camera. It was actually, it was wiped clean. I'm like, hmm, that's interesting. You know, we always have pictures of the kids or whatever. So there's obviously evidence that, that has been cleaned up. So me being, you know, computer crazy guy, you know, there's ways of getting that material back. So I, you know, I, I get the pictures back off of the flashcard, and of course, there's all the evidence in his glory. And you know, it's her. It, you know, it wasn't horrible stuff, but it was her with her shirt off, and you know, pictures of this guy, you know, on her computer. And it was just, you know, it was just a bad, bad scene. And uh, and this complete jackass is like, you know. I send you pictures with my shirt off. I need pictures of you with your shirt. Yeah, and he's 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 sounding like a pro. It's like, okay, now it's your turn, you know. And he's, you know, he sort of has a really creepy kind of, you know, like picture in the bathroom with the camera in front of his face, like his his iPhone, whatever, and snapping a Dude, picture. Dude, I said in front I'm sorry. <laughs> what was that? He said he was sorry. Yeah. Well, listen, this is funny. So I end up. Um, fast forwarding a little bit, I end up separating from her, uh, and I'm just I'm a miserable wreck. I mean, I've known I've been with this woman. I got like a question. I said, yeah, go ahead. 
Did she ever really cross the line other than the pictures back and forth on the internet? So let me ask you this. So what is crossing the line in this context? I mean, is that, let me ask you this. Is that cheating? When she is. That, that's has, what I'm asking you. Is that cheating? Because. Absolutely know, cheating. In my mind, it's cheating. Because some people would consider that very small. Right. When you, when you have an, in my book, if you have an emotional affair with somebody, you know, and it's more than just. You know, just a you know a loss of sanity for one given second. If you carry it forward, if you've got an emotional connection with somebody and you're trading fucking naked pictures with them, that is absolutely cheating. You know, and from a female perspective, I can't speak for you, Miss Kitty, but uh, you know, I think I don't know. I think the physical stuff is actually even means less. If you've got a connection with somebody, even if it's virtual, uh, that's that's not good. And I think that's I think that's cheating territory i don't know what do you think to me it's cheating it's somehow easier to get over than the physical side though like you know (laughs) if i look sometimes people strain their marriage right i would hate it if it were mine but people happens in marriages recover from this from time to time i would find it more difficult to recover if she had gone that extra step and had the physical relationship too Oh, it would have been it would have been difficult, you know. But the thing is, I confronted her, and in my in my little mind, that you know, I was thinking, you know, she's caught with the evidence, and she's just going to sit there and you know, drop her knees and begging for for uh, forgiveness. Well, she's pissed off at me because I'm basically, you know, I'm 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 you know, looking at her computer, I'm I'm scanning the freaking network. I mean, I'm 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 spying on her, and that's what she's pissed about. So. You know, this this was the beginning of the end of my marriage, and I, you know, I actually look back and I'm thinking to myself, I could really, I could have done so many things different, and I could have kept on, you know, I could have actually kept that marriage together, but I sort of made every mistake in the book. When you're caught in in that situation, there's so many things you could be doing right, and there's so many things you could be doing wrong, and I did all the wrong stuff. Uh, you might you might have said this before. What, how how old were y'all when y'all got married? So we got married. So I, I was dating this woman. I started at 21 years old, and we got married at 26, which, by the way, I, I think that's too young. I think you need to wait. And Woody's going to disagree with me because he got married really young. But in, in my opinion, I think you need to live your life. <laughs> was she 26 as well? She was 24. She 24? Was 24. Yeah. I, I, was just, well, I was just wondering because in my mind, I'm trying to defend her, and I'm thinking – but you you both got married at a really young age, and maybe she was doing the online promiscuous stuff to try to keep herself from taking that extra step and taking it to a physical level to try to keep the marriage together. Uh, who are you, Doctor Phil? I, that's <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't you don't see what I'm getting at. Since she got married so young, she didn't really have a, you know one of those long party lines from from her past. Yeah, and, and she yeah. was kind of reaching out for something exciting. To try to keep herself from, you know, like going out with like the bus boy or the pool boy or whatever to get her kicks, so she can right, keep yeah. the marriage together. Yeah, I'm I mean, so much ass. <laughs> what, what was that? <laughs> What'd you say, Kyle? I said pool boys get so much ass. Uh-huh. <laughs> I, I'm gonna. That's gonna be my next. That's gonna be my next career move. By the way, there you go, man. We're going to business <laughs> together. But Absolutely. you know, I. So anyway, so. You know, we end up separating, and I'm just a miserable wreck. And I, what's funny is, I end up landing at Woody's house. So I, I first off, I, I, uh, you know, go to my parents, and that's the one place you don't want to go back to. It's like for me, it's just the walk of shame to go back to your parents' house and and live with them again. And I, and, and they reminded me very quickly of why I didn't want to be there when I was 18 years old. And <laughs> my my parents are great in the sense that they will welcome you in, but they will do everything that, possible, subtle stuff. To make sure that you don't want to make, you know, that you don't want to stay. I mean, they're they're going to make you know your life a little bit miserable. And uh, it was a reminder of just what I went through at eighteen. And then, you know, they're great parents. I can't complain. But I got the hell out of there after about two weeks. And <laughs> Woody, I don't know, I don't know what happened. I don't know how we connected. But somehow, you you offered your house to me, and mm-hmm. and I ended up taking you up on it. And it was, well, I guess I was there for what three months, three or four months, maybe. Yeah, three, four months, something like that. Yeah, you know, and get things figured out. Yeah, and it was it was great, man. I had a, a really good time. And Woody's one of these guys, and I have all these knucklehead friends that are like, uh, "You need to get your fuck on, man. She's cheating on you. You need to go 
bang hookers and you need to go to the strip clubs every other week and you need to do this and you need to key your car and you need to hire a private investigator and all the things that in retrospect would have been bad ideas. And Woody is like, dude, you need to, you know, let's explore this. And it was sort of like sitting on the cat on the therapy couch almost in a way that it's like the, you know, that, you know, you need that kind of positive support versus, you know, my knucklehead neighbor who was, you know, basically going out and saying, you need to go bang everything and, you know, every 20 year old in town. Now that the divorce is finalized, <laughs> banging worker. <laughs> I should be. Yeah. I, maybe it was horrible advice, Woody. Maybe I Wait, should did, just listen to the other last Matt. night go well. Um, last night did go. So, so I'm, I'm a single guy again, which is crazy because like I said, I've, I've been with the same woman since I was 20, 20 years old, right? My entire adult life. So now I'm thrust into this whole dating situation at, you know, at the time 39 and now I'm 40. I'm, I'm ancient. Um, and, and just trying to figure this whole thing out. And it's, it's amazing. There are so many people out there that, um, are, are better matches. And I really look at my, you know, the, uh, uh, relationship with my wife. And there's so many things that just didn't kind of fit together. And we fought about everything. And to me, I was thinking, gosh, she's the only one for me. I couldn't, I couldn't even think about being with anybody else. And I sort of thought that for the first couple of years. And, uh, last night, this woman, you know, she was sexy and well groomed and she was an anarchist on top of everything else. She was like uh wanted to live off the grid and like grow grow her own food and wanted to like um and to She'll me that's exciting. Partner. Yeah. She can take my spot. I she just dawned on me. <laughs> <laughs> right. Dude, did you ever um get back at that guy who you know, who, who Facebooked your ex wife? No, but you know, I, I never did. I never. Oh my did. god! So, yeah. so what's his name, by the way? His first and last name. If we put it on the on the stream, there might. See, I think you should tell his wife. I care as much about his marriage as he does about yours. Like I hate so, this guy. Okay, let me ask you this though. So it's two years later. Do you think it's really necessary to kind of go back there and let's mm, own him? Yes, let's do absolutely. it. Absolutely, let's own him. What's his name? I, I'll have to dig it up. I actually forget. But um, <laughs> dude, this we'll guy fuck is his a life jackass. Up. Dude, yeah. I I'm, I want his life, man. I what, not that hey, I want to live his life. I want to own his life. He's a cop. Fuck him, man. Fuck this he guy. Was, hey, no, yeah. no, no, no. Here, here's an idea. Here's an idea. He's a cop. Okay. That means you can call in anonymous complaints. And get him fired. No. Oh. I did what? Dude, cops should people live without in getting bridge. fired. <laughs> so here's here's a funny story. So I was sitting on his couch. I mean, this is you know, uh, uh, I, I would say two years ago, and I'm sitting there weeping about you know, just being a big big pussy about everything. And I'm like, yeah. And Woody and Woody goes, you know, maybe maybe we should pay this guy a visit. You know, let's let's straighten him out. Let's you know, let's just let's kick I his ass. And I'm like, I don't know. He's sort of a big guy. Lives up in Maine. And he's like, yeah, we'll see how big he is. Because I guess. It's- <laughs> Because I guess at that point you were like really into kind of. I was like fighting all the time, dude. Like I was kicking cop at in my um. I had two cops, two prison (laughs) guards that I trained with all the time, and none of them could do. They couldn't fight for crap. And right. uh, I was like, eh, this guy's going to be the same. It, it, you know, we'll see how big you he is. were totally ready to go up there and take the road trip. And I was almost there with you, man. It would have been, it, it w- would have turned out horribly, I'm sure. But uh, <laughs> it would have been a hell of a road trip. Let me tell you. State lines and beat up a cop. Right. <laughs> what could go wrong? That seems perfect to me. <laughs> but, so, so everyone, so all you guys have piqued my interest. So, I mean, should we really dig this whole thing up? Do you think I should drop... Because I've got old emails. I've got, I think I've got a couple pictures. I don't of the think guy. you should. You know, I think what? you should. It's this called emotional ruined scars. His marriage, man. If, you, if, is, if you bury this shit, because so. you ain't like, if, you, if you've kind of buried it and stuff, why dig up with that stuff again? No, no, no. All Dude, right, this whoa, is whoa. my friend Dan, and it's, there are penalties for fucking with him. It's, that's, yeah, exactly. that's how this goes yeah, down. I understand, but <laughs> Dan, I don't know. If, if, it, if, it won't if it was like a year after it, I'd be like, yeah, do it. What difference does it make? Two years? I don't know. No, no, no. You can't escape. There's no getting away. There's no statute of limitations on ruining a man's marriage. There's no statute of limitations on sending semi-nude pictures and receiving them from some other man's wife. There, there's yeah. no forgiveness. There, there's no, we like, ah, oh, you know what? It, it's been like 600 Kippy days. Let, let's let this yeah. slide. No, no, no. This doesn't slide. This doesn't slide until this guy's suicidal. Absolutely. <laughs> you know what, Kimmy J? <sighs> this guy... This guy is number one asshole. This, <laughs> yeah. 
All right. I think <laughs> we get Kimmy J to send naked pictures of him to that guy. <laughs> this guy knew exactly what he was doing, right? This guy. Oh, uh, he was a pro. Yeah. This was a. It, he was a pro at breaking up a marriage that had four daughters in it. Right? This is not a trivial thing. This is a. Right. This is freaking. This guy needs. Uh, I want vengeance. Fuck. Screw Dan. I want vengeance. <laughs> I well, okay. want so you, got, you, you guys got my brain going. What you could do to a cop across the state line without just beating him up? And you guys want to hear a couple of the ideas? Yes. Let's hear it. <laughs> oh God. All right, you go there. You wait till he goes to work. You break into his house. You set a bear trap in front of the front door. <laughs> and, then you, and then you leave. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. I think I saw this on Looney Tunes last week. <laughs> Get his ideas. No, no, the fact is, okay, first thing you do when you walk in the house, you open the door, you throw it open, you go right for the light switch. You don't look down. You, the man steps on the bear chap, it breaks his leg, and he's got to crawl to the fucking phone. You're in another state. <laughs> that, that's uh, a horrible idea. And when I see, say, I, it, I mean, awesome. people on fire. <laughs> oh. Sorry. <laughs> wow. So I, you, so, know, you know, the easiest sort of, way to get back at him is yeah, just to get his name out there, right? I mean, we can tell his wife. He's married too, by the way. You know, oh this, my god. Okay, chop his dick off as well while you're at yeah, it. Yeah, this guy's married. married. Yeah. This guy's married, and Dan's marriage is over, and he's <laughs> cheesing along fine. Kimmy this J is had the best suggestion yet. She said, what? "Eat it." Kimmy J said, "Eat his dog." <laughs> <laughs> He's the number one commentator from Vietnam. Let me ask you this: so, 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 what the hell would like- Charlie Sheen do in this situation? What would what? Oh, Charlie Sheen. Charlie Sheen. What would Charlie Sheen do? Charlie Sheen <laughs> would do a lot of coke and a hooker. Yeah, Charlie Sheen would do his wife and two others at the same time. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's how he would handle it. And afterwards, he'd be like, "I showed her the time of her life. Right. You know, this is a, this is a party experience that I gave her. It's by winning." Dude, can we winning. talk about Charlie Sheen? Can we get off like like, like I'm as, as yeah as, sure as, man think, absolutely. Charlie Sheen is the fucking man. All right, here's the way I see Charlie <laughs> Sheen. I don't think he's bipolar because I think he made a very good point that bipolar people have these like down points where they're like incredibly depressed and self loathing, and he doesn't have those. He's just happy all the time. Now, is he eccentric? Yeah, he's out of his <laughs> fucking gourd, but he's still a badass. That guy is like. His life is coke and hookers, all right? That's a good time, let me tell you. I'm jealous. I really? Know. Tell me more, Kyle. <laughs> tell me more about coke and hookers. <laughs> coke and hookers. It's yeah. Like, it, so I'm actually torn on the Charlie Sheen topic, right? On one hand, I can see the surface beauty that is the Charlie Sheen lifestyle. lifestyle. I, I, I can see how it, just a, a nonstop parade of uh, porn stars and cocaine and whatever hottie wannabe actresses is... Uh, is an okay way to spend your uh, your Friday night. On the other hand, you know that there's some emptiness, unhappiness, downtime that he's not talking about right now. That six months from now, and mark my words, six months from now, he's going to be like, oh my gosh, I crashed, I hit rehab, and you know that wasn't what I said it was. I don't believe it. And this is someone really? that doesn't even drink wine coolers. <laughs> and you said that you would love this lifestyle of cocaine and, and, and hookers. Uh, come on, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm so busted, aren't I? I think <laughs> he's having the time. I think that he he is and has been having the time of his life for like 50, for like the last 30 years. Like he's killing it. Like like every day is a fucking amusement park for that guy. Like like he's loving it. <laughs> right. Like like it's like he, he's just happy twenty four seven. It's 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 a parade of cocaine and porn stars. Okay, it doesn't get any better than that. It's hard to argue against that. That's those are excellent points. I mean, yeah, that's Colin makes it's, a solid point. It's how sustainable like, is it? I'm forty. Like what, I don't know if I could. You know, my head would explode. It probably. Like, what is that guy's points. downtime? He's like, yep. Too much coke and hookers last night, so we're just gonna get drunk now. Like, mm. like that's his bad day. Like that guy has that guy's living the dream. Okay. And by like, the way, he's say? actually he's actually on Twitter now, and he registered literally like three days ago. He's already got a million followers, and <laughs> he's uh, over a million followers. I think it's like up to fourteen or you know one point four yeah. million. And he's he's posting pictures of said hookers, and you know. It's 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 a fascinating train wreck to watch. It really is, and I think it will follow, crash at some point. Let's all follow Charlie right now. I'm going to Twitter as we speak. Yeah, at Charlie Sheen. That's it's it's fascinating. <laughs> I actually put Charlie Sheen in one of my Cisco presentations, um, Woody. I don't know if you knew that or not. 
Yeah, you showed me. You quoted yeah. him on your, your presentation. Him. Was, you, know, the, you know, the whole presentation just needed a little, needed a little bit more tiger blood. And uh, it, it went over. It was sort of funny. But, we, you know, we work with a bunch of, I don't know, just kind of straight-laced IT guys. It's not – a lot of this stuff just goes way over their head. Yeah, they don't uh, – they're not fun. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple who are. But, but by and large, they, uh, they don't get it. Yeah, yeah. Looking at his Charlie Sheen show, I don't see these hooker pictures. There's one, there's one of his. I think he's, isn't he going out with Brie Olson or Rachel yeah. Olson? Yeah. There's one of her. Not, not that I've, I'm looking, but <laughs> post up from the bottom. <laughs> who's Charlie who's Sheen? Olsen? So I hear there's pornography on the internet, Woody. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's it's a rumor. It's a nasty rumor, but I think she's. Oh, look at that. Safe search is not turned on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, the, um, so I'm looking at, um, I don't know, I'm about page six now of Brie Olson pictures, and it's making a really compelling argument for the Charlie Sheen lifestyle. <laughs> lifestyle. <laughs> yeah, he was, on Howard, he was on Howard Stern a couple of days ago, or maybe yesterday, and evidently he pays all these women. So he, uh, he throws these really elaborate parties, and he gets, you know – possibly dozens of women just to party with him and he pays them and I guess he's that kind of you know he has that kind of scratch where he could pull that off and uh, God no, I remember when he <clears throat> took that what was the Spin City right he took that job he replaced Michael J. Fox when Michael J. Fox got sick and uh, one of the big reasons in doing that is he wanted to restore his credibility he wanted people to know that he was a normal sane level headed guy and uh, I think he's changed his mind about that uh, yeah, I mean, you think? <laughs> <laughs> now he's holding epic interviews, but I'm telling you, he's going to switch back. I know it. So how do you feel about this whole thing with um, with uh, Two and a Half Men? Do you think that they should have fired him for uh, off-screen annex? I mean, he was delivering, and he was doing well on the show. Yeah, I think that's enough. I think if you deliver on the show, then, uh, you know, just keep employing him. It, it, if he was uh, – it, was he hurting people? No. I don't, I don't think so, right? I mean, it was all voluntary. It's all consensual adult stuff. And, uh, yeah, but I, I don't think you fire people for what they do as consenting adults. No, I think it was actually fueling the ratings, if, you know, I, I think. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Honest. Yeah. I got, I I got, I got, was, yeah, go ahead. I got a question. This has nothing to do with this, but, you know, we're talking about hookers and coke right now. It's illegal for a hook. It's illegal to pay a hooker to fuck you. But you can pay the hooker to fuck somebody else legally. Can Are you, you sure about this? Cause, Pornography. You know, I've, I've hey, Woody, how much money advice. you got? How much money do I have? <laughs> Pornography is a good example. You can pay two people to fuck on camera. But if, if you're the guy she's fucking on camera, it's illegal. See, the thing is, one is selling a service, and the other is selling a product, right? You know, if I'm selling videotapes of me having sex, that's legal. If I'm selling me having sex, then that's illegal. That's the key difference. I don't. I don't get the key difference here. You, you're still, you're paying a woman to do something sexual, but not with you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One's yeah, selling but- a product. It's selling a videotape, a DVD, a, you know, downloadable stream or something like that. The other's selling an actual, you know, service on you. It's, it's I'm fucked confused. up. I'm yeah, it, on, you know, as I think it through, though, like as so long as you tape it and sell the tape afterwards, you're good to go, right? So, so if you pick a hooker <laughs> up and you try to get a blowjob on the corner, you just got to videotape it and you're in the you're in the green. I think so. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, this yeah. chick with Charlie Sheen's fucking hot. Yeah, it's Brie Olson or Rachel Olson or whoever. I don't know, she's Maybe wearing a, like a yellow top and holding like some kind of like fruit juice shit that says naked on the side. She got a fucking awesome rack. Oh, is that the yeah? Is that the one on the Twitter feed? Yeah, yeah, she's she's a cutie pie, man. How do you feel about? And you know, I don't want to bring the class of this podcast down a little bit, but oh. um, <laughs> why not? I'm not going to go there. Forget it. Go so, there, go, son. And we're all curious hey, now. Yeah. <laughs> so one of the criteria, and I'm really really picky. So when when I'm dating these women now, I I for some reason don't like the bolt on boobies. That's something I do not. Oh, uh, they my, annoy. It's very annoying. And oh, Dan, by the way, Kitty's gay. Yeah. Oh, are you? <laughs> yeah. I just, I'm scared I'm going to pop him. 
<laughs> are we are we talking about lesbians now? So let's just go straight there. Oh, no, scared you're gonna pop. What do you don't like about the boat on boobies, Kitty? Let's hear her females' perspective. Like, yes. Just wrong. Like they look so wrong. wrong. They look wrong. They feel weird. Like even the skin around them feels icky. It's what about the lady downstairs? She's got a nice rack. Which one? The brunette? Or nah, the blonde? the blonde. The blonde that's nah, kind of got a... fuck it. Nah, I th- I'm not into blondes, man. She has a huge ass as well. Did you see that? That's a giant ass. <laughs> is, it, is, it, is it a rap video ass? We Yes. yes. Like a school rap video ass. I, like, like Biggie needs to be in there next to that ass. Yeah, is it like an L.A. face with an Oakland booty? Yeah. <laughs> so, so Dana, what's wrong with the bolt-ons in your mind? I mean, is I, you afraid I'm, to pop them? No, I'm I'm with Kitty here. I, I'm more of an all natural kind of guy. And um, let me tell you, I've I've had a I would say considerable sampling in the Raleigh, greater Raleigh area, but <laughs> everyone that I've dated and gone there, every one of them has has been bolt on, and it's it's annoying. You know, well, let me it's, ask you this, Dan. Yeah. All right, when you, you're 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 hitting the big four zero here in a minute, so you probably date already, chicks what early thirties. He's forty. He's forty. I'm forty already. Yeah, uh, yeah. What happens when they get to the point where the chicks that you date are considered young when 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 the booby boobs are like mops? Uh, you go for the bolt ons in. You mean the boobs are like oranges in the bottom of giant tube socks? Is, is yes. that weird? Yeah. Um. Yeah, I just I would rather honestly. I just think it needs to be natural. It's it's my thing. I know a lot of guys want kind of the Brie Olson, you know, that whole look. But I just I I'd rather now. One thing though, if it's if there's nothing there at all, I mean literally nothing, then maybe you can sort of make it a little bit bigger. But otherwise, all all natural, baby. Yeah, and I mean, is, how's the how's the retread market going? Like. It, you, you're 40, right? And there's, there's all these I women am. who are re-entering the market. You are cleaning up. I clean up very well, and uh, <laughs> it's it's funny. So I'm on I'm on, and I'm probably I'm sort of ashamed to say this, but I'm on Match, and it is like a pussy machine. I mean, it's like a printing press. It is one of the best things. If anyone wants to just cut through the BS and just meet people, it's a really good way of doing it. And what's funny about it is. It really is just about your attitude, and you need to sort of have this "I don't give a shit" attitude, and and just really be confident. And um, it's been a work in progress for me. I mean, when you're when you're left and you set in your you know your your marriage implodes, you, your your ego and your self confidence takes a hit. There's no question. But which is what I've been working on. But what what's interesting is I had two match profiles. One of them was this sort of. And Woody, I'm sure you've you probably know where I'm going with this. It was like this short story, Dance where it was, yeah, it was it was the gayest thing ever in, in retrospect. <laughs> and it was a short story of me. It was actually left. You know, Woody was in the in the story of our buddy Ian, this guy Trey, all these guys we were surfing with. And you know, we're sitting there planning our, our surfing trip, and there's this woman across the bar, and I we kind of, you know, lock eyes, and I walk over there and start hitting on her, and. And I, I send I send the profile to Woody and Ian and Trey, and I'm like, "What do you guys think? I'm going to keep your names the way it is. What do you think? What do you think so of this?" She wrote this story about like this girl <laughs> that he loved, and it was all this like mushy crap that he was looking for in a girl and this true connection and nonsense and yeah. Yeah, it was, and I'll have to post. I don't know if there's a place to post it, but it's pretty funny. And Ian goes, "Dude, that is the fucking gayest thing I have ever heard in my life. That is ridiculous." <laughs> And I think Woody didn't you want to like add a choke scene to it or something just to try to liven it up a bit? Uh, something like that. It was awful, but you got responses from it. I, I did get responses. I, I, you know, there's some women, but it's really more of the um, the 46 year old kind of Birkenstock literary types, which oh, you know yeah. they need love too. <laughs> Not my type necessarily, but so I, I sort of got rid of that, and then I ended up, I think. In a kind of a drunken stupor, I just and I was sort of angry. I just sort of wrote this profile that was like, "Look, I'm picky as hell. I'm probably going to break your heart, and you know, this is what I want in a woman." And let me tell you, that is generating a tremendous amount of leads. I mean, it is absolutely amazing, and it's it's that kind of attitude, not necessarily being an asshole, but just being just the guy that just doesn't care, and you know, I'll take it or leave it, and the confidence thing, I mean, that's that's what women are looking for, absolutely, and if you can build that within yourself, you know, where it's actually authentic, then, you know, 
I hear you. The so, whole like, look, I'm really come. picky. I'll probably break your heart. Don't even bother. Right. It helps that you look like a cross between freaking Matt Damon <laughs> and Marky Mark. Yeah, that yeah, that does help. I don't I don't really see that, man, but um I will take it. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> yeah, about once a month people are like, Yeah, you know, you look just like that guy. I'm like, Yeah, I know Mark Wahlberg. They're like, Yeah, that guy. <laughs> Dude, how many women try to pick you up on match? Like like what is your hit rate? How often do you find someone chasing you? Um so so uh, tomorrow I'm supposed to have two dates, you know, which um, is, is a good day. <laughs> it's a good day. <laughs> one in the morning, and there was going to be one in the evening. And the one in the evening is um, smoking hot. I mean, she is, you know, and you guys are going to be, you're going to just berate me after I say this, but she was really, really good looking. And this is, this is a second date, um, but had no personality. You know, she, she knew oh, she was good, good looking enough where she didn't really have to work on it. And it sort of annoyed me. You know, I need to be, I need someone, I'm going to sound gay by saying this, but someone that's actually got some substance to him. Are you still dating the stewardess? No, no, no. No? no you should I'm have not. seen the stewardess. She was gorgeous, she was, she was blonde, and she was sure to develop lower back problems soon. Yes. Wow. But, they, <laughs> but they were bolt on, I'm telling you. And I got, I hope to God she doesn't hear this, but they were bolt on titties, and I'm just not into it. But the ass, I mean, the ass was, it spoke to me in ways that it was just perfect. <laughs> I don't it think was, asses are supposed to talk to you. That's. The, oh, yeah. Did yeah. you ever get yourself in a situation with two girls, right? One with bolt ons and one with fakes. Like, if you motorboat them, the sound on the bolt ons is hilarious. Just say it. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me more. I, oh my God. Just, <laughs> just putting that out there. Try it. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, but she's yeah, she was a lot of fun. But the thing is, it's just I I lose interest after about six or seven or eight dates, and you know it's I, yeah. Again, I'm gonna just sound like some big big pussy, but I'm, I'm looking for something uh, a little bit more now. I'm interested so. in the number. The number of how what? many girls pick you up a day? Like you no, know, no, respond I'm, to your match. Profile. I'm talking about the, how many how many times you flogged a dolphin on one of them. <laughs> Flogging a flogged dolphin. the dolphin. <laughs> All right, so that is a phrase that he just made up. <laughs> it's, isn't flogging a dolphin more of like a kind of a, a self? It's a solo act, right? It's a solo act. Yeah. Uh, how many times did you? Uh, That's you know, how pornos end nowadays, baby. Well, yeah. <laughs> Give us there the number. Oh, I wouldn't know. Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't know. I keep hearing about this whole porn on the internet thing. I just don't. I, I think it's, it's <laughs> yeah, rumor. it's me. Um, <laughs> 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 so we got a number. You you got a number of hit list. Y- you know, there was probably there's probably been in the last year not not a ton, maybe five or six. Oh, I thought, I thought I thought this was an assembly line making pussy. I was expecting you know two or three times a week. Dude, well, look, and well, look. I mean, as far as like actual like, doing it uh, consistently, yeah, more than that. But as far as like five or six women, you know, over the course of the last uh, year or so, you know, I'm not going to embellish. I mean, it's, but like I said, I've got five or six leads right now, and they're all sort of in various. I don't know. You find you a Rick stages. James woman yet? A Rick James, tell me more. <laughs> super freak, son. Super freak. A super freak. <laughs> Girl that would just ask you to do something that you would have never dreamed about asking her to do. Let me let me tell you this story, right? So the other thing I found out about being a single guy is that there are some there are some crazy people out there. Mary, I'm talking. Let me, and I'm not going to name any names, but there's this one woman. She's pretty good looking. That teaches at my daughter, my three year old's preschool. I, I think she's as cute as a button. Um, and Dude, so wait, wait. I saw the pictures she sent Dan, which is, he's surely going to get to. In I'm, I'm going to get there. Button does not describe her. She is. She was hot. Mega hot. Yeah. She was mega hot, right? And so, I was sitting there, and it, it, I think it was had a Girl Scout function. I mean, it was at the church. <laughs> I mean, you can't get more pristine than that. And we we sort of we're kind of flirting back and forth, and she's like, Dan, I just want to let you know that. Um, I have an open marriage, and any time you want to throw down, I am available for for that service. And I was just taken aback. I couldn't believe it. And so we're kind of talking some more, and she's punching on her BlackBerry as, as we're talking, so I just figure she's texting somebody. And I'm, I'm about to leave, and she shows me a picture of uh, her with another woman in the back seat of some limousine or somewhere. Wait, I take it back. I never saw this picture. Yo, you never saw which picture did you? Which one are you for? Um, I'm lying. For, I saw it. I just saw it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, 
And I'm like, it, at that point, I just didn't know what to do. I mean, now I can probably <laughs> think of a, a few things, but I was just so much in shock. But let me ask you this question. This is for the forum here. Um, she said she had an open marriage, so she's married with kids. Would you go there if she said, if someone just came up to you and, and you're a single guy and, and said, look, I, I, we, let's just go have sex, right? And this is sort of the situation I'm in. Or would you try to confirm with the husband first, or would you just kind of take her at her word and just do it? Or not you know, do it, not even go there. Did the church have a bathroom? <laughs> 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 All right, I think we know where Wayne stands. Think, yeah, yeah, I think I know where he stands. But seriously, though, would you would you go there? Or would you not go there? Man, I don't know what the protocol is. Kitty, you have an open marriage, right? Yeah. So, is do you just does the husband just not know? Like, don't ask, don't tell. Is it like would no? I tell anything? him everything. Usually, so the, like, it's, did you have fun? Like, even like uh, even my husband, like he's. There's another chick that he does every now and again. Mind you, I do her as well. Never done her at the same time, though. But, um, yeah, no, we, we're just open and honest completely. Like, if I'm going to go and, you know, see someone for a night, I tell him. So if Dan were to confirm with the husband, this would be, like, a totally legit move in most open marriages. Some people do it different. Like, I don't like – there's some people that are out there that are really sly about it and that they're just so doing it behind the other guy's back. But That's not an open marriage. That's cheating, right? Yeah, that's, that's cheating. cheating. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But some people mix it, if that makes sense. So, like, some people say, oh, I've got an open marriage, but they're not. Um, but, yeah, I mean, most people will talk to each other and whatever. So, so what's the honestly. protocol, though? So the, from my perspective, I'm the guy that's about to nail this chick. What is, what is the protocol? Do I do I confirm, just from a protection, you know, just to protect my own injury? Because I don't want this guy, you know, John Wayne style, like kicking down the hotel door. I don't. I don't know. I've never pants. been in that much of a serious situation with it. Because I mean, I'm usually banging the chick. I'm never banging the guy. So it doesn't. Tend we need to, to be talk a offline. You're fascinating. You know what I mean? <laughs> Dan's working his moves. <laughs> Dan, she's, she's gay. She's not gay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to say this. Maybe she's trying to get you in the sack and just telling you the open marriage is. Maybe that's what excites her about it, that she, she, she tells her husband afterwards. If you go and ask permission to take her out on a date, maybe she ain't down no more. Right. But what would you do? I mean, do you think that – because here's the thing. North Carolina is one of these crazy states that – and I, I think about this. I, I'm way too much in my head, and this is part of my problem. Um, North Carolina is one of these states where if you are cheating with somebody and you break up their marriage, you can get sued for like large amounts of money. It's uh, – what's, what's the By statute the way, called? It's called um... – it's like alienation of affection. Alienation of affection, yeah, yeah, yeah. And by the way, you have a case against that main jackass for alienation of affection. Possibly. I mean, they didn't really – I don't think they had sex or anything, but it's a case for sure. I mean, I don't know, man. <laughs> but uh, what was his name? You just deny Again? this shit. <laughs> what was his name? Just, just tell me and my 2,000 friends here what his name was. And yeah, I amazing. will. Is there a way for me to post it? Because I, I actually do know the name. But is that really a good idea? <laughs> <laughs> well, how about you type it in Skype and I accidentally type it into the live stream chat whilst reading it out whilst I'm typing it. All right. How do be I do that? be very unfortunate. I'm, I'm sort of a Skype newbie here. so you Click on the little chat bubble to like show the IM. You can yep. do this? I, I, All right. What do you think, Woody? What, what would Woody do? Yeah, Woody what is my, I, do? I swear, honestly, you guys... I would have ruined his marriage by now. Like you can't get away with that. There, there is no freaking no. hooking up with my wife. Not, not physically, but you know, freaking. He broke up a marriage, man. A marriage that had four yeah. daughters. There are consequences to this. Here, you got to do it the FBS Russia way. You got to go fuck his wife. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I do feel bad because the guy is. You know, he's got a family and everything. And do I really want to shit on that too? I mean, that's. <sighs> is Bring it behind? the bed boards. I, let him come home and the bed's like laying on the fucking floor. His wife is laying over there all pleased. He knows what's right. All pleased. <laughs> <laughs> she just rolled with Marky Mark, bitch. Right. Um, can we introduce a bear trap somehow? Because I think that's a, that's a necessary piece of this whole thing. <laughs> well, you put it right in front of the door of the bedroom when he goes in. He's, when he goes to slap her, he just step on it. Oh, my God. <laughs> 
No, I'm sort of past that. I mean, I, I, I could go there, and part of me just wants to stop this kind of douchebaggery from, from moving forward. Because he, Woody, it's, it's a great point. The guy was a pro. He knew, he knew how to sort of escalate the situation. He knew how to get my ex-wife to sort of comply, and he knew where to put the camera in front of his face, and, you know, so you, you couldn't see who he was. I mean, the guy was a pro. He's, he's done it before, probably doing it again. So do you oh, stop? Man. You know, do you stop that behavior? You know, that's that's what you got to ask yourself, I guess. I'm fired up. I want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I want to do oh, it too, man. This guy. Let's is make a, a road trip of it. We we can like make videos on the way up there. Oh, <laughs> oh this could be the end of Painkiller already, right? The one where the guy like sues us as an organization. We're <laughs> not profit weird. though. What are you going to get? <laughs> yeah, dude, I've got LLCs protecting me. There's there's like two layers. Right. Prepared for this. I, I saw it coming a long time ago. Mm. Um, uh, dude, I could totally see getting revenge on this guy. Yeah, This guy's bad news. And who knows what other marriages he's doing this to. Should we, maybe we should just scare the crap out of him. Maybe we should yeah, yeah. Him. I was thinking I the same thing. Let's be a FBS Russia knocking on his door. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, you know, maybe I should, you know, I do have some evidence, so maybe I should say, look, I know, I know what you did two years ago. I was this close to dropping this on your doorstep. Don't fuck with me. And you better go home and you better kiss that wife of yours and beg for forgiveness. You know, something I've thought about that. It's, it's probably not the Woody way. Woody would have taken a road trip and punched the guy in the face (laughs) and done some other things, but, um, which would have been more rewarding for sure. But yeah, man, I, I just I feel dude. like there should be serious consequences, right? Like what he did is not a small thing, right? He knew she was married. He knew she had four kids. He he knew this whole thing, and he right. just discarded it. I care as much about him as he did about your marriage. Yeah, let's 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 talk after the show, buddy. <laughs> <That's the plan. laughs> All right. It's gonna be the worst mistake ever. It's gonna. I finally have some sanity, and I sort of have some control over my life. I'm gonna mess it up by by <laughs> killing that scab again. But uh, let's bring Joe Lowe's on with us. What could go oh. wrong? <laughs> That's an epic idea. That's oh. <laughs> screw Joe Lowe's on. I got Samantha. I can bring with me some Samantha. Oh Samantha. yeah, Samantha's my target rifle. <laughs> <laughs> The guy no. does conceal, though, I, I think. Cause he's I don't ex- give a shit. He ain't going to conceal me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We, we were talking about no, Redemption there. said that he could take Lo- Joe Lozon. And I'm like, what? Like, in what world can you beat up a UFC fighter? And he's like, here's my strategy. I'm going to tell him to meet me in a field, and I'll be in the bushes one acre away with my sniper rifle. I was <laughs> like, that'll work. I think, uh-huh. you t- I think you can beat him with that strategy. Are we talking about Call of Duty or are we talking about real life here? What, no, oh, he used to do some competitive shooting. He, uh, he okay. hit his target. Gotcha. Gotcha. I got a very, very nicely dressed 700. Remy to 700. You know, free floating barrel, glass packed, bull barrel. Good to go. Woody, you want to you tell the story about your little Russian rifle that we fired at the range? Like, uh, <laughs> little. The, that's the most in the got, son. Most in the got, son. Yeah. Most in the yeah. And leading up to it really quick, so again, I'm weeks into my separation, just a complete mess, and I'm at Woody's house, and he's like, dude, st- first off, stop your, your crying, and let's go to the range and shoot some weapons. And I'm like, do you think <laughs> it's a good idea? He's like, it's, do you think it's a good idea? It's an awesome idea. So me being a dumbass, I was actually friends with my wife and my ex-wife, but wife at the time, on Facebook, and I posted on there, hey, going to the range, going to fire some weapons, going to have some good times or whatever, and, and she thought I was going postal, like I was preparing to, to pop a cap in her ass, and so she was really nervous about it, but we ended up going, and you had this Russian rifle, right, man, that was never been fired by you, but probably fired at Nazis? Like, yes. what's, what's the story behind this thing? That's pretty much on target. I, I want to say the thing was built in 1942 or something, so there were a few good years left in uh, in, in World War II. And uh, I bought it at a gun show and brought it home and hadn't tried it yet. What's, the, what's on the back of the receiver, Woody? I need to check it. I, I don't have it memorized. But what's funny about this... The year on the back receiver. Mm-hmm. What's yeah, funny yeah. about this weapon is that... So it's never been fired... 
by you, but fired by someone else. But the, the the cartridges, if I remember, were pretty freaking big, right? Yeah. And and most of the rifles, and I'm not an expert, but the rifles that I remember seeing on the range had this nice kind of padded. Yeah, what is it called? Like the the padding behind the butt of the or the the handle of the rifle, the butt, whatever it is, the sort of. You know, yeah, it's, it's the, the butt. It's yeah. It's do I have yeah. like a modern rifle? About- it has like a one inch rubber pad, this two two three with a scope on and it. And what did this other thing have, man? <laughs> like an eighth inch piece of steel. It's, <laughs> it's so that, Russian. That's there to uh <laughs> it's actually there to knock people's teeth out in case somebody got behind you. Play it for. Yeah, I'm sure. Or maybe the Russians work. just didn't give a shit. They're like, We don't care about the comfort no, of our soldiers. All military rifles have that. Okay. Oh really? Okay. Yeah, it so, just struck us as so Russian. Like, yeah. Yeah, so, and uh, we end up so we end up uh we end up going and I guess you had to buy am, am, you know ammunition off of eBay that was specific to this rifle, and they're probably easy to get. And so we're sitting there, and I'm like, "What? Do we, what? What happens if this thing blows up? Like, um, you know, when you fire it, it blows up like a Bugs Bunny cartoon with the thing peeling back like a banana, you know? And and you know what? I mean, what kind of kick does this thing have? And you end up firing it, and it it wasn't as bad as we thought, but there was definitely some, you know, some nervousness going into it. You know, yeah. firing. I had only fired a two two three rifle and a twenty two before, so this had the more kick than anything I had done. And then you know, it didn't hurt or anything. I just sort of held it tight to my shoulder and fired it, and it was a good time. But Dan yeah. starts posting on Facebook that he's like learning, you know, firearms and and shooting and you know, all the different stuff that he's doing. And his uh, separated wife got legitimately nervous that he was building the skill set. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So you can be Facebook tarted sometimes. What did you yeah. post recently? Let's share that. Yeah. I, God, what was that, man? Yeah. What? Could no, have I'm been? not going to talk. Remember my daughter and sort yeah. of life changes she went through. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's just say I am absolutely Facebook Facebook retarded, and um, you know, let's just say I got four daughters. My ten year old is going through sort of that stage in a young woman's life where. You know, it's once puberty. a month. Yeah, mm-hmm. she hit puberty once a month. She's got to do her thing at 10. And by the way, you know, the freaking brochure never said anything about a 10-year-old going through that. I, I expected it to be 12 or 13 or later. And like Ten, a dumbass, you take this fact and make it your Facebook status? I, I, may, I put it on Facebook. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like oh, what, the, what the fuck is going on? Because <laughs> really, honestly, it's about me. Right? It's not about what she's going <laughs> It's about it's about, about my trials and tribulations, and nice. uh, somehow my ex-wife found out. I don't know what what kind of spy, you know, because I, I have about two hundred Facebook friends. Someone told her, which I sort of I don't know how she found out, but she she sent me an email with all caps and lots of like exclamation points, and you know, I basically took it down. It's just it's not good, but. I, I will make. I am retarded when it comes to Facebook. It's sort of, it's my superpower. You might be retarded when it comes to Facebook, but you're a freaking genius on Match. dot com. I'm a genius on Match, and let me tell you, <laughs> yeah. um, when it comes to these surfing videos that these guys put together, or my my neighbor has an Emmy that he earned like ten or fifteen years ago, I will use that to generate pussy, man. I will. You know, I will, I will, I will pop a surfing video on you, or I'll have a picture of me with my fake Emmy. It's not, it's a real Emmy, but it's not mine. Um, I will use this podcast. I will say, look, you know, I have a date with someone tomorrow morning, and I'm going to walk in there and I'll be like, oh god, I'm just so tired. And she'll be like, oh, wait, why, why are you tired? You have your daughters last night? No, I was on this podcast. I was sort of invited as a guest, and you know, it's uh, how, how many viewers. Do you I, think? Mean, I think we can tell her half million. And by the half way, million. yeah, that is an authorized use of this podcast. If it gets you, uh, gets you some putang, then yes. we've accomplished our mission. Even if it's unauthorized, I will do it anyway because it's just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's yeah, it's all good, man. Very good. What else? Yeah, wings. Got a topic? Uh, I want to know if you have the bayonet for your rifle yet. No, I don't have the bay for the Mosin Nagant. Yeah. No, I don't have the bayonet, and I don't have like an old school legit sling for it either. I have like a you, newer. You so thing. gotta get the bayonet. Your your buddy Dan will be so impressed with it once you get the bayonet on it. <laughs> <laughs> this is my goal, really. <laughs> oh man. What do you do with it? Do you just it just look cool, or are you actually? Oh, I got a picture. With? I got a picture of mine with a bayonet. If you don't see it, I'll see that. But I do have a topic. Um. Yeah, Casey Anthony, 
Who's Casey Anthony? You don't remember Casey Anthony? She was the girl in Florida who had the little girl that that uh, was found at near, near her parents' house in the woods, decayed, and she she it took over two months to like report her missing, and then when when they actually found the body, she's like, oh, I reported this and this and. You know, the babysitter stole her, and then she goes out later that there's no babysitter. Well, she's back in the news. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, she's trying to say that they didn't read her Miranda rights and trying to get the whole babysitter story stricken from the case. And this is a girl that was caught partying during the period her little girl was missing. So she's not winning Mother of the Year, is what we're saying. Y- y'all don't remember Casey Anthony? I, I don't. No. I don't. It's not the kind of story I follow. I'm more on like international politics type guy. Oh, or Charlie Sheen. And Charlie Sheen, apparently. <laughs> right. Kyle oh locked gosh. himself out of the room. This is awesome. <laughs> so drunk Kyle took a smoke break, locked himself out of his room, couldn't figure out the key card, and it looks like Kitty just rescued him. So we'll have him back on the on the podcast shortly. <laughs> so what what are they doing? Are they in you said they're in Chicago for some reason? Yeah, so if I have the story right, um Kyle being a, a minor league celebrity like the, the rest of us, uh got offered to attend this paintball tournament and uh, they flew him out there, gave him a car. Um they're also like, you know, giving him some paintball equipment type stuff. I'm back. Uh, hey kitty. I would, we were just talking about Kyle's deal. So they flew him out there. They get, put him up in a hotel. They're selling tickets to. Uh, uh, not him. quite that. Yeah, if we just wanted somewhere to do some uh, filming, and uh, CPX is like. I don't know. It's like Disney World for paintball. It's the nicest field ever. It costs seven and a half mil to build. They had uh, film set designers go in and build it, so there's like a city and stuff. So I just thought it'd be epic for Kyle to film there. And I know the owners fairly well, so uh, picked them up. So they paid for us to come out and do a load of filming. Uh, CPX paid for me to fly out every now and again to film there as well. Um, and they're just a really, really nice family that run that field. So. Very cool. And, and, what, and what are you filming? Me shooting the shit out of him. Oh, nice. okay. So can you take... I know Kyle used to be fairly serious about paintball, right? He would like yeah, he did that and do yeah. his thing. But on the other hand, I know like sometimes serious at a local level isn't the same as serious at a at a higher caliber. Mm. How is his mm. game? I don't know yet. Today, uh, I don't I don't know if Kyle told you we got massive delays on the flights. Uh, we were a six hour delay at Atlanta, so we didn't get in until late last night. Uh, so we didn't get to go to the field or anything yesterday. So today, uh, we just kind of went to the field. And I have my new guns and stuff turn up as well. So we were messing around and I showed them around. I mean, there's 20, 22, 24 fields there. So, you know, it takes half an hour to go around the fields, even on a golf cart, just to show him. And the field was closed today. Uh, so we did a couple of quick videos. Um, but tomorrow is going to be rainy, so we'll probably not go. But Saturday and Sunday is going to be playing. So I haven't seen him play yet. I think he's going to be a bit of a noob. That's my expectation as well. Yeah. Um, I don't know, but yeah, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, the right. reason Kyle went, by the way, is the hotel only gives you like 24 hours internet at a time, and his 24 hours ran out, and he didn't realize like he's half shit-faced. <coughs> Still talking into his headset. <laughs> <laughs> Not realizing that the call had dropped. So he's going to go sit beside you now? No, he's here. He's in. Oh, oh hello. Hello. He just hello. Have to refresh everything, but you you know it doesn't tell you that it's disconnected you from the internet. So, so the, um, Kyle, what happened here? You went outside your room and l- got confused by the key card. No, that was All just right. about four minutes ago. All right, hang on a goddamn minute, okay? <laughs> what happened was Kitty came and got me, and she handed me a dummy card, which she obviously it was got key from, card by from his tits- door. Downstairs. No, no. You got that from Tits McGee down there. You two were plotting against me. And uh, that's all there is to it because it did not work on my door at all. Luckily, I had a backup card in my pocket and that worked just fine. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, sorry about getting disconnected there because, um, yeah, we got 24 hours at a time of internet and then you got to re up your deal. But it's, yeah, so I'm good to go now. So uh, you, you you guys see that video of the uh, the uh, politi- the politician's vehicle running over twenty people? 
Greece was it no. a different Confederate Republican? No, it was in Egypt. Oh. <clears throat> I've seen Do the I video. see that video? It looked horrific. Are we sure we know who the driver was? Are we sure we know who the people were? No. Were they like, sometimes you see like a, you know some random guy doing something, and they're like, oh, the governor was driving, but it wasn't really <laughs> true. All I'm sure of is if they... Uh, if the Egypt's people had the right to bear arms, that vehicle wouldn't have ran over anybody. <laughs> <laughs> That's Wait, all I'm saying. What are the gun laws in Egypt? Are we sure they don't have the right to bear arms? They can ride uh-huh. on camels. Who cares? <laughs> I want to ride on a camel. My my parents rode on a camel. They That'd be to, badass. Yeah, they went to Israel and rode camels to, I don't know, some, oh, like the mountain that Mohammed found the freaking commandments on or something along those lines. I don't know. Muhammad? Dude, light up. Moses? Moses, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, began so with an M. He got the first oh bit my God. right. What are you? Ma- yeah. Muhammad ascended to the heavens. That's Muslim. <laughs> Good point. When was the last so, time you've been to church, Woody? We I know, right? The last no time I've been to church... Um, it wasn't too long ago. I mean, somebody must have died or got married or something. <laughs> or maybe <laughs> Christmas, possibly, or... <laughs> uh, that, that would be it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Egypt Egyptians have a firearm thing that's kind of fucked up. You're not allowed to have a long rifle or a shotgun, but you can have a pistol. And there's three firearms per 100 people in Egypt. Hmm. Really? Yeah. I still Aren't never you... touched a real firearm. You know that. Well, when you come down to South Carolina, I got a bunch you can touch. Yeah, we went to, um, what was that shop by the hotel? Bass Pro Shop. Back. Yeah, they had so many guns. My God. I thought That's it was what? an airsoft cabinet at first. Well, they got like 1,300 fucking shotguns <laughs> and like three pistols. No, they, <laughs> no, they th- dude, those. seriously, the Bass Pro Shop in Chicago is is double what Atlanta's is. It's two stories um and their gun their gun selection is really nice. Like they had uh they had FN, they had I mean Beretta, Ruger, Sig, um Smith and Wesson everything. Like they had probably 200 pistols maybe. They had a really big selection. Hey, uh, I've never Dan, seen did, so many. Did you accept that picture I sent with the most I got with a bayonet on it? Um yeah. How do I I'm do that? I'm not accepting anything on this internet. <laughs> oh yeah, I've I've got the mo- I've got a Mosin Nagant with a bayonet. It's like the pig sticker, right? Yeah, it's the eighteen inch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got that. Yeah, I got a couple of those. Woody don't have a bayonet on his, and I'm like, dude, that makes the fucking gun. <laughs> yeah, dude. No, I found a website the other night. You can get them for like seventy or eighty bucks for that. seventy you can get bucks. Them. Wait, yeah, that's with the gun, right? Not just the bayonet. No, I'm talking <laughs> the gun, bayonet, and all. Oh, right, right. yeah, yeah. Yeah, like you can get the hex bolt uh, Mosin Nagants for eighty bucks. You see, if Pretty I had crazy. a gun with a bayonet on, I'd just throw it like a javelin. I think that would make <laughs> it all. <laughs> I don't know how well that would work. I think it'd be awesome. Yeah, but we're having a fucking awesome time here in Chicago, man. This is a great place. Like I said before the podcast, something about moving up here. This is awesome. Uh, yeah, You're only thinking about system. moving up there because they fed you as much food as you could eat and the alcohol to match. Yeah, they did. <laughs> it was nice. And so, what's the day. weather like? Uh, Coles, uh, it's about 30, I'm not happy. It's about 30. 30. Yeah, I that's don't own a coat. Dude, you're from Georgia. Uh, how can you like 30 degrees? I, th- I don't think you spent your time outside in the Windy City. I don't think you've thought Dude, this we through. We spent a lot of time outside. Oh, no, we did. We spent yeah. a lot of time outside. Hey, Kyle, mm. I seen your tweet on the tweet the other night about trying to get somebody to buy you a steak. How'd that work out? Oh, I was just joking around. Some guy was like, well, you would try to make somebody buy your steak. <laughs> I, was, I was just joking around. Jesus. I was people joking around until somebody accepts to do it. <laughs> no, like, I, I wouldn't even want to tell anybody where I was staying in Atlanta. I was with my dad. Like, I don't want anybody showing up. It'd be weird. No. Did your dad mm-hmm. beat him up? I, I, don't, I still don't want people showing up. Weirdos. Uh, people can show up all they want Friday and Saturday, or Saturday and Sunday, but up here, but like... That was my happy time in Atlanta. Like Saturday and Sunday's like work time, fun. I don't know. We're gonna have, we're having an awesome time though. This fucking like I don't know if you, I know you guys don't, probably don't play much paintball, but like they've got a hundred and fifty acres and it's like 
It's just an amusement park of death. It's beautiful. They have a city. <laughs> they have one field that looks like Fallout, like broken up buildings, rubble, all kinds of crazy crap. And they got another city that's just, that's just like, um, um, uh, what is it? It's a city. It's it's a city with cars, with road signs. You guys can go. See, it's at cpxsports.com. It's like easy to find, but it's fucking crazy. It's the coolest thing I've ever seen. We hung out there like most of the day today. So it, it is it would, it would it be fun for like a noob like me who who's yeah. done it once because yeah. I, I envision myself playing with like fifteen year olds that would just kill me. No, it's not <laughs> like this. See, see, it's it's literally like the it's one of the it's probably it's definitely one of the top five biggest paintball fields in the United States. Uh, it's like I said, one hundred fifty acres, and that's split up between like dozens of fields. And, like, a lot of the people that are there are, like, first-time paintballers. First-timers. Gotcha. Yeah, exactly. So you can beat up on the noobs yourself. Like, it just takes some common sense to, like, to like mess those people up. So. we got to have a Call of Duty question here. Have you seen anybody right. sitting in the corner yet? Uh, we haven't played yet. So you just, we just went today and kind of toured the, toured the area. And in paintball, that shit doesn't work. You sit in a corner in paintball, you get fucked. Dude, did you follow <laughs> through with any of those video ideas we talked about? Um, we are making some very interesting videos. You want to see me holding a 50 caliber machine gun? That'll be up tomorrow. I was talking about the paintball related ones. Is it okay? Oh, to, like, it is. To spitball some of our ideas in the podcast? Yeah, go ahead. I don't remember yeah. what we were saying. I'm pretty drunk. <clears throat> so, so picture this, right? FPS Rush is like running at a full sprint and he ducks behind a barrier. And, uh, <laughs> these guys are like fully oh, auto firing like paintballs over his head. And, uh... What does Russia do? He relaxes, he smokes a cigar, and he pulls out a real gun. Like that. <laughs> that would be awesome. They don't know. My ammo kill. <laughs> oh, that's the other thing. Like, like our regular paintballs are obviously paint balls. They're these round 68 caliber balls. And, but I've got this gun now that shoots like... It ha- it's like half paintball, and then the back part is shaped like a bullet. It's shaped like a fucking bullet, and it's got it's a rifle first, on it. It's a first strike round. Yeah, they're like hard plastic death rounds. They're like they're awesome. The, they're, they're like- the police use them. Um, it's a form of simunition. Um, but it's- there's now we just got him a pistol that shoots them as well. Yeah, it's and awesome. Are you allowed to I'm use a- that on the paintball field? Yes. Or I would yeah. imagine. Can you yes. really? Yes. yes. That's cheating. They're not going to know it till, till it's too late, though. <laughs> it's too late. This is why I don't do it, because you got, you know, guys like you packing real heat. This is not good. <laughs> it's not. It's I mean, fine. It's, it's Kyle's still... letting me shoot him with a round tomorrow. So that'll no, go I'm up. No, not. We've been through that. Yeah, dozen... you are. You agreed to it, dude. I, you can shoot me in the shoe. I was, it was obviously a joke. And I said shin. It was coming from Fuck. a guy who was going to shoot himself with the twenty-two round. Exactly. Oh my god, I can't believe that. I think we talked about that post podcast last week, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was like, he, yeah, what an idiot. Kyle was convinced that a Cosmo magazine was bulletproof. So he was going to do a video using a Cosmo as a bulletproof vest. The, the Cosmo Hall magazine, you know, the one that's about like 186 ways to put a penis in a vagina. He was going to use that, put it under his shirt, and shoot himself. And I'm like, no, 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 Kyle, don't do this, don't do this. <laughs> you know, they're not really bulletproof. He's like, dude, those things are thick. There's so many ads. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Like a, a you know, these a 22 <laughs> goes through like an inch of books, a nine millimeter goes through like seven inches. It's crazy. And Kyle's like, trust me, I know that you can't shoot through Cosmo magazine. <laughs> and uh, he starts leaning out the window in in his mansion. And uh, shoots through a magazine. And you hear him. He's like, wait a minute. Russell, Russell, Russell. Window opens up. And uh, and then, <laughs> bang! <laughs> the gun goes off. And then, what do you know? You can't shoot through a Cosmo magazine. And he was going to use it <laughs> like, on his belly. Yeah, I took a twenty two and shot through like this thick-ass gun catalog I had that was literally an inch and a half, probably two inches thick. Like this thick fucking catalog blew right through it. I was like, oh... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a lot of kinetic energy there, huh? You almost Apparently died. We've, we've taken down CPX's site. I just text Technino's, and we're like, "My bad." <laughs> oh. <laughs> what kind of what kind of crappy ass sites do these people have that you know a couple thousand people well, hit it at one time? Well, think about that, dude. Like any business, like any like small business that's not like a, a corporation. Like obviously, you know, go to you go to McDonald's dot com. It's going to handle that. But like, if you're dealing with like a regular sized business, like that should go straight down. 
for me. We stay up at gaming all the damn time on the side. It never goes down. Woody, <laughs> do you want to do you want to rebut that? Like, how? yeah, <laughs> actually, so a Huppet is at like the limits of what it can handle right now. Like, if we tweeted it, like I haven't mentioned it on my website or my channel, I should say, for a while now because I know that if I do, it'll take Huppet down. We have two servers actually going up, so they, each server is about four times as powerful as the current site. And we're not going from, you know, we're not just doing one, we're doing two. So uh, so it should be a whole lot better than the next site, and uh, um, we'll have it up shortly. But yeah, you can take down Huppet. If, if, if you know, someone like us tells people to go hit it, Huppet gets into trouble. Yeah, it's uh, when you have that many people doing, doing it at the same time, it's <laughs> difficult for stuff to, ha- to like keep up. How long do oh they stay God. down when that crash is like that? Not long. Like, our <laughs> site won't actually be down, although they're, they're telling me it is now. Um, <laughs> yeah, see, huh. uh, our site won't actually be down as soon as the traffic's left. I mean, it's, it's there. It oh. just can't handle all the responses. It, it, there are requests going to it that the site never gets to. And, and that's what happens. But the next version of this, I, I hope to be able to, you know, talk about it and not run into trouble again. But remember no. when we used to put it in our channels all the time, I would sit there and do promotional videos for it. Now it's yeah. at a point where everyday traffic is at the limit of, of is where it was back when we advertised it. And uh, you know, it's time for our fourth server upgrade. I was, so I was in the a... last five minutes, you crashed CPA and Puppet. <laughs> yeah. Well done, guys. Well done. <laughs> well, uh, speaking of Puppet, I, I, why don't we get a competitive team like Optic? Um, I wonder what that would cost. I mean, with the three of us combined, I could probably swing the jerseys and shit. Well, yeah, but we wouldn't be Optic. You know, they have some of the best. I th- I've heard them described as the most talented team there is. You know, we, we, we don't have of- to be us. We can go cherry pick. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. You know, if this team's going to be really, really good, I'm not going to be on it. <laughs> I think I should be on your team with my 0.0001 KD. <laughs> I'm a pro. Yeah, there'll be a tryout, Kitty. Um. <laughs> <laughs> we can get you in at the bottom, but you're never going to be on the main roster. I'll be at the spawn going, what do I do? Hmm. Every basketball yeah. team has to have that one white guy that's good at warming the bench. <laughs> hey, I so, watched um, Duke play last night. They beat Clemson with four white guys. Hmm. What was I going to say? No, you- uh, oh, oh, yeah, people say Optic is the most talented team. They're just not the best tacticians. They haven't had the time to, with each other that, like, an Envious has, for example. So, um, you know, I don't know. It, 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 we'd, have to, we'd have to get some real pro talent to, to roll at that level. No, what you need to do is you need to use me as a decoy. I, I, I'm not going to mention the girl's name, um, uh, but she's a female gamer that I play with. And these guys are being really, really vulgar to her. So the next lobby, when they were doing it, you know, oh, you want to suck on my whatever and all this, she's like, yeah, that gets me really hot. And, like, she starts talking really dirty to them, and they just completely lose focus, and we just rolled over them. <laughs> that team, like, that's what you need. You need to find someone like her, the hot voice, to flirt with them, knock them all off, and then you've kind of taken them out of their comfort zone. And you just yeah. could, you get, could you get her to call me in a little while? Right. So, that's why I mentioned that. I was name. talking to I was talking to Fizz about that the other day. You know, because I was talking like MLG is nowhere near where it should be, like size wise. It averages what six hundred thousand on like an event on like on an event stream, like on the weekends, six hundred thousand hits or something like that. That's nothing. And I was talking of like they need to integrate some things from the WWE into MLG. You guys don't uh, agree? WWE? Yeah. Um. Like that have always called yelling, best time. Best. And, like 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 before the round begins, have one team like two minutes on the mic just talk shit on stream to the other team. Then they play the game. Then whoever wins gets the right to talk shit back. So uh, here's my thought on that. Like it first of all, I think a little smack talk might be pretty interesting to add to it. Like I see where you're coming from. I, at first I was like, no, this is a terrible idea. But as I thought it through, I was like, you know, I bet I'd like to see that. However, I'd like to see rivalries being started. I, I don't want this handshake and shit. I want, I want two teams that clash that's got bad blood. I see that. The challenge is this. Those WWE guys, they actually have some talent. Like, they practice those rants. They work on that. Th- these guys are half, you know, MLG wants to be taken like a sport, right? 
Well, I'm I'm just saying. I predict that if you get like um, a Pistola out there, who's a I don't know him, but you know I, I I like the way he plays. I like the way he holds himself. But if you get Pistola out there and ask him to be you know some WWE trash talker, it won't be his uh, forte. He'll be terrible it, at it. it. Yeah, but he might be terrible at it. Well, if you get a whole team full of good trash talkers, they can't play worth the shit. But people show up just to see them trash talk the other team. Dude, I would love that team. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just guys out there. Yeah, yeah, I'm about just saying. everyone's saying white boy. Yeah, white, white boy, boy for boy captain. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, it would be so much more interesting if there was like a little bad blood between you know teams or like – like the Red Sox and Yankees. I don't watch baseball, but if the Red Sox and Yankees go into the playoffs, I don't miss that. Yeah. I'm just the, saying. The Yankees in general, if they aren't in it, it's like, uh, oh well, maybe next year. You know, they add something to baseball playoffs. I mean, there's so much bad blood. Those teams hate each other and they're in this like they have to face each other like first round every year. Man. So, who do you think would be the best trash talker in on the circuit? Like, do we know any of these pro guys? I would, think uh, Stainville is probably a pretty good trash talker. Who? Stainville. I don't know Stainville. I'm thinking of Fear itself. You know, would he be able to talk some trash? Ogre? He's kind of... I just don't get how it's so small over here when you go to you know, other places like Hong Kong and stuff. And the turnout's massive. For these, well, obviously it's not MLG over there, but... Well, their equivalent event. A lot, a lot of the problem with MLG is they they're pot, they're making money. They're making pretty good money, but the players themselves are making nothing. Yeah, I, I mean, there's no there's no paper. reason to become a pro player at this point in the game because, like, let's for example, they got a, they got an event in Dallas coming up. It's it's uh what ten thousand dollars first prize. All right. That, well, that, you got to split that ten thousand dollars four ways. Five. So five with five with the manager. The coach, and that's yeah. yeah, and that's what eighteen hundred bucks or something like that. And then you got to play. That's not for, even going to cover your flights, let alone your hotel bill. Yeah, eighteen hundred bucks. You got to got three hotel bills. You got to pay. You got a flight there and a flight back. You also got to take a day off work. Yeah, it's not really based on the prize money though, right? Like the the more successful teams are able to get sponsorships from yeah, you know, yeah. headsets, from Dr Pepper, Doritos, or Old Spice, or, or whatever, and. and you know, some of them make a million dollars a year. I'm told, but Halo, uh, like I was talking yeah, to Stainville from, I'm talking, I'm talking to Stainville from Envious yesterday, uh-huh. and he says he's about ready to get out of it because it, it's there's no money in it. You that actually was lose money. A private conversation. <laughs> <laughs> it does sound like it might have been a private conversation, but well, um, <laughs> Kyle's uh-huh. just as savvy drunk as he is straight, but. Uh, uh, yeah, it, it, you're right. There's not a lot of money in pro gaming, uh, it, unless you're one of those lucky guys that gets the sponsors. Yeah. yeah how much longer do you think brand T-Square is going to make three figures? What was that? How long do you think T-Square going to be making six figures with Reach? Not long at all. Halo is dying. It is dying at a rapid pace. Oh, not afraid to lay that out there, huh? No, I'm not afraid. Yeah. Halo is dying. I it said is. that in a video recently, and everyone went uh, wild on me. Because in my mind, there's two major FPS players right now. There's, I guess, what I'll call the Battlefield series and the COD series, right? You know, that includes Bad Company and Battlefield linked up. <laughs> they have a new engine coming out for their next release. It, It's supposed to be the COD killer. I don't think it's going to be my cup of tea. I think they're going to have gigantic maps with slow gameplay, and, and it won't be for me. But it might divide the FPS community you know it'll, it'll get a lot of people who do love it but the, the, most people are stupid as shit what he like people are like battlefield or oh, better than call of duty like you know how many people <laughs> on battlefield right this second as i'm talking i just checked forty three thousand. get out that's every platform it's pc xbox and ps3 combined forty three oh, thousand. you know what if we were to take that fractured battlefield community and unite them it'd be, the number would be a lot bigger than 43k no. if you said how many people are on Battlefield, Bad Company 2, Medal of Honor combined. All right. Let's say this, Woody. How many people are on the PS3 version of Modern Warfare 2 with all the hacks? I bet you it's bigger than 43,000 no on doubt. one platform. Mm-hmm. And that game's older than Battlefield Bad Company 2. And it's got hackers that just ruin the whole scenario. I mean, hackers the fact is... Cod? No, Modern Warfare... PlayStation had oh, a, uh, a jailbreak happen. 
on Modern mm-hmm. War. So Modern Warfare Two, Call of Duty Four, World War on PlayStation are unplayable. They got people going invisible, God mode, new counters yeah. that last forever. Like basically what Xbox was when it first came out. Mm-hmm. It's what's happening on the PlayStation now, and that still has more users than Battlefield does at you know prime time on one console. <laughs> I mean, I just want to call out with the PS3's problems. When Modern Warfare 2 first came out, the Xbox had bigger problems than the PS3 in terms of being hacked. When COD 4 was ending, the PS3 had bigger problems than the Xbox. And now the PS3 is having bigger problems again. So to, to cover that, COD 4, first stage, PS3 was bad. Modern Warfare 2, second stage, Xbox was bad. Now PS3 is the bad one again. I mentioned it was cyclical at one point, and guys were crazy. They acted like that was the most ridiculous notion in the world, that the PS3 hardware is inherently superior and that uh, there are, you know, all the hacks belong to the Xbox because it's the this big piece of junk. And uh, no, no. Truth is, they both have their issues and they'll both keep popping up and getting solved. What's really annoying me at the moment is I, couldn't, I can't connect to any unhacked COD 4 lobbies. They're all speed hacks or whatever. Like, I just, I tried for three days. I think, actually, I was talking to Kyle at one point. Seven what? games, back-to-back, different lobbies, all hacked. I just ended up throwing my controller out the window. That's weird, <laughs> because me and Socrates have been playing a bit of COD 4 lately. It's kind of funny. Me and Socrates got on the other night, and we, pl- we played Black Ops, COD 4, and Modern Warfare 2 in one night. Um, but COD 4 was by far the most fun of the three, and we only ran into one hacked lobby, like, after hours of play. And yeah, it was I a just team tag. We just that, was, that was Xbox, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Oh, you think I'm getting on a PS3? I, I, um, I want to be able to talk to Sock. <laughs> but I think we're talking about the PS3 having the worst hacks. That's what you're talking about, right, Wings? Yeah. PS3 got jailbreak, so every game that's not Black Ops on the PS3 right now that's multiplayer is unplayable. That's funny. Get that's on the PS3. <laughs> Kyle. I've got one. I mean, people when you say stuff like that, people are like, fuck you. I'm like, dude, I got one sitting on my entertainment center. It's not like I'm an asshole here. I'm just being honest. So one more topic to wrap up the podcast. Yeah, go ahead. All right. So here's the deal. I mentioned in uh, a road to commander with Hutch that I had this theory that everybody was a little bit gay. Right. And, uh, and they all thought it came from Ron White, by the way, who is a comedian who apparently said the same thing. <clears throat> it really didn't. The truth is, I was watching the Savage Lovecast or listening to it. It's a podcast that uh, guy Dan Savage does. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, and that's when he sort of said it or came to me or something along those lines. And the deal is this: like, if you were one hundred percent straight, then you wouldn't want guys in pornography, right? You would just be you know, all about the girl. She'd be a solo act, or there'd be two girls, or something like that. That would be the one hundred percent straight guy's version of porn. But no, right? Most guys like guys in their porn. And that, to me, makes them at least 5% gay. And if you see, like, a scene with two guys and a girl in it, and you're like, oh, this might be cool, I'm bumping you up to 10%. Thoughts? <laughs> well, I probably, you might as well not be at the 15%, because I, I like the guy to have a pretty penis, too. <laughs> <laughs> Again, Wings of Redemption, the home run. <laughs> <backwards. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> and by that, do you mean uh, cut? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, cut. I, I mean, cut. You know, has a good shape to it. Yeah, I like. I like it to be visually appealing. Are you a connoisseur of the penis wings? <laughs> it's more than fifteen percent. How big prefer wings? What? How big of a cock do you prefer? Like, like you're looking for a big one there? Does it matter? Oh, good lord! Oh my god! I was going here. As long as it's about six inches over, I'm good. All right, I'm just making sure. You know, I like a big one. Uh, I'm eight, <laughs> eight, nine inches. As long as you don't have one of those monster cocks, they're having to, like hold at the base just to keep it straight. Like as long as it's you know, <laughs> the, you know, there is there is a too big cow. You ever see the porn with a guy with a cock that's so big that he can't actually get it hard? <laughs> God. Are we able to talk about about anal fissures instead, please? <laughs> no, no, we want to know, Dan, what kind of cock do you like in your porn? Yes, Dan. I keep hearing about this porn on the internet. I'm still... <laughs> how do you find that stuff? I just don't get it. I don't understand. 
Like, I, I went to Nickelodeon the other day and there was porn. Like, how do you not uh, find porn? I mean, you I got... don't get how you guys are so frigid about it. Go to England after nine o'clock on TV, everything's go. Turn to Channel 5 and it's porn. Yeah, but see, it's censored like, here in America. <laughs> yeah, now, after nine, we have the watershed. So pre wait, wait. nine, pre nine when, p.m. When you nothing. say porn, what kind of porn? I mean, are it's we pretty soft porn. You know, people fucking each other. The occasional lesbian thing. Sometimes soft porn. Yeah, kind of. It's porn. Are we seeing? No, no, no. All right, nobody. Everybody's tiptoeing around. Do we see penetration? Yeah, sometimes. All right, there you That's go. That's not okay, what soft so like, porn is. Yeah, yeah, well, it kind of is because it's like low lit, you know, bit of nipple. You kind of see it, you kind of don't. Um, mm. But uh, yeah, we have the watershed. So before nine o'clock, you can't say fuck or anything like that. You can say bloody and shit and all of that. That's fine. After nine o'clock, censorship off. Free for all. And this is just regular TV? Yeah, regular TV. And which country is this? England. Damn. What kind I of penis do you like in your porn, Kitty? What? What kind of penis do you like in your porn? None. None. You got a husband. Yeah. You got to have. A, you got like a little bit. No, you see, my porn. I like it to be like you know, redhead on redhead action. You know. Oh, nice. <laughs> Tell me more. <laughs> Preferably, one of them has a whip I and a stun gun. I like where you're headed here, kid. Nice little stilettos. <laughs> I like it if they leave their shoes on. <laughs> I prefer oh, yeah. grandma porn. You know I like what, it really? myself. Off and hit each other with them. So yeah, damn like, <laughs> so I'd like to see you self-identify here, right? Like you're a gay woman who's married to a guy, right? So yeah. who occasionally has straight sex. What percent gay are you? I don't know. Devin joked about this the other day, and he says, "Oh, my 99.9 percent lesbo wife." Really? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I mean, he joked about it, but I don't yeah, know. I mean, I'm really attracted to Devin. I don't generally get attracted. To other guys i don't know what it is about devon we have a really great connection um like he is my go-to guy you know he's just always there for me he's a rock we are a team uh, and everything like that but um with women they're just fun man oh my god they are fun so let me ask you this question so if he somehow got hit over the head with a skillet or whatever and said had a change of attitude and said, I don't like you doing that. W- what would you do? Would you divorce? Would you sort of give up this sort of I don't w- think I'd divorce. fascinating I... lesbian? Oh, I mean, tell me. Fascinated. <laughs> I don't know, to be honest, in that situation, because I was very open with him from the beginning. Yeah, but people change, very so he's, what he's do you trying think to ask you, he's trying to ask changed, you, would you give up? I don't up? know. I'd try and work it with him. Is it possible for? Because it sounds like you're bisexual. I'm not Columbo or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's sort of I'm a figure. <laughs> I sort of figured this out after about an hour and fifteen minutes of podcast. Right. Um, yeah. Are all bisexual Is it the most people? Voting the tits thing, or <laughs> right? <laughs> so if you're bisexual, does that mean that you, by definition, are not monogamous? If you're in a relationship with somebody? No, not by definition. Um, I just have an open. Yeah, someone's saying you know polyamory. Yeah, I guess it would be that. Um, just it would because have to someone. Be. Bisexual doesn't mean they're in an open relationship. Like someone can be bisexual and happy being, you know, monogamous with a guy or monogamous with a girl. They just, you know, they don't have any preference. Right. So they could they could f- be in a long term relationship with one sex and not. Yeah, and be fine. But they're bisexual, so they don't don't you have the need to sort of, I guess, if you were. <laughs> You know, uh, in, if you're married, I, so I'm fascinated you know, with this, by the way. If they're bisexual, then they'd have a real hard time being pleased by one person. I, I would think so, right? Yeah. I don't I mean, I can see where you're coming from, but I think most bisexuals just fall in love with someone regardless of sex. So they're not mm. restricting themselves in a long-term relationship by saying, I'm only going to hunt down a guy or I'm only going to hunt down a girl. They're, they're being very open <laughs> They can still settle down with one person. Um, whereas with me, I just like chasing tail. I mean, I don't... The chasing tail. God, <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> I don't see the problem with that. So, Kitty, I heard... Did you used to be like an Olympic-level trampolinist? No, I was in the youth uh, Olympic squad. I was in the youth, like, um, when I was a kid. So, yeah. So, tell trample- me more about this. Trampolinist. Um... I was, I was fairly young, I guess about 12, I used to train quite a bit, and then I got into tennis, 
Um, but yeah, it was pretty hardcore, man. It was like um, we did uh, three to four hours, four times a week training. Um, and uh, yeah, I got pretty good. And then we were going to the nationals and someone was warming up and they came out of a move called a double back Barani. And uh, she lost her balance and came onto my trampoline as I was landing out of a equally as complex move. And she kicked the bed and I jarred my back out and uh, got fear. So I never got back on a trampoline after that. You said you got fear? Yeah, I could never, like when I got back on the trampoline, I could do like backward somersaults and things like that and backflips and stuff, but could never go forward. Could never do front somersaults, like really stupid basic moves. I just gained fear. Mm. But it was crazy. No, I landed on my side and jarred my back really, really bad. Like I never came off the trampoline. To this day, I've still never come off the trampoline. Um, Kitty, do they have an adult channel at this hotel? Like I'm, I'm scanning here, but <laughs> I got the oh internet. Uh... But yeah, so and <laughs> but yeah, I got I got to a pretty high level with it. Um, but that eight months where I was having like ultrasound and physio, you know, four times a week. When I got back on the trampoline, it was just like. I felt really uneasy and I could just, you know, you look at how high the other people are jumping and I guess I never realized how high I was going and how I was throwing my body about and stuff, you know? Wow. That's crazy. I got something to leave the podcast on. Go ahead, Robo Jordan. All right. Here's what's going to your connection. Um, Battlefield sold 2.5 million units on its opening week. Black Ops sold 18 million on its opening week. Food for thought. At some point, something has to take COD off its perch. Right? It has it, to. It won't I be think... on top forever. No. Yeah, but people, I it. think that the Mark only Lillard. reason I'm for so Call of Duty. I'm excited about Portal. <clears throat> like, you have no idea how excited I am about Portal 2. Oh, I mean, that's you. a great game, but I do. As far I, as, like, I King think of the I'm Hill. the guy on this podcast that does know how excited you are about Portal 2. I'm, I'm yeah, right I am like, I actually went into Minecraft and made a 3D companion cube. I was like, <laughs> that's I am, it. Here's my plan. I'm going to buy Portal on release day, but I'm going to try not to play it until the weekend, at which point I can live stream it. And I'm hoping there are people there to help me through some of the puzzles. And, and you know, I just sort of enjoy it and hang out with all the <laughs> subs and uh, live stream and play some Portal with everybody. That's, that's, what that's, like to that's a badass idea, but I am I'm not patient enough to do that. I wish I could say that I'd wait the weekend and do something equally as cool. But, yeah, no, as soon as I get that bitch, that's good. I'm playing it. So Woody, isn't Portal the game that you were – I was when I was at your house living with you, Portal was mm-hmm. that game that you were sort of working through, right, where you go through different – colored windows and somehow you fall through the ceiling and then I get to the floor again. Oh, yeah. and That's Portal. Now, I, I don't know how many times I've beaten Portal now. It, I'll call it a dozen, right? Like, not like a ton. There are people who've played it much more than me. Yeah. But, uh, like, last live stream, I, I think I beat the whole game in a few hours and, uh, you yeah, know, knew the puzzles going into it. What was the one where they had, like, the supercomputer that was sort of taunting you as you went? And that's it was like, that's, oh, that's, that's cool. Glados Glados. is the is the yeah. is the computer. He's name. a bitch, man. Oh, uh-huh. he's awesome. Remember that one time where I threatened to murder you and burn you in molten lava? <laughs> yeah, that, that is was a hot wasn't that. it? <laughs> Yo, you know I what this game sounds it. like? The same this game sounds like yeah, I want to scream. I have no mouth, but I want to scream. You ever play that game? No. It's a it's a puzzle game that has a supercomputer called AI. And it like took over the world. Uh, you should you, you should look it up on YouTube. You can see it. Hmm. I like puzzle games sometimes. But um, I actually have the portal song, the credit song, as my ringtone on my phone. That's how sad. I remember that. that. Yeah, it was like, and it was one of these really addicting songs that you can't get out of your head for like. Yeah, three days. you really can't. Man, uh, I would what? look it up on YouTube just to hear it and listen to yeah. it. Yeah, no, because I, I can't get rid of it. Look, that, this one is a triumph I, thing. Yes. Yeah. That, Yes. This yeah, that. Oh yeah. my gosh! I, I, can they match that? Can they do that again? I mean, it, even I if don't the game know. Is, I hope so, good. dude, because it was just so enticing and so like you'd think you'd been playing Portal for like half an hour and you'd look up and realize that you'd been like, two and a half hours on it and you'd be like, oh. "What just happened?" I I heard that Portal Two sometime somehow ties into um, Half Life. 
the yeah, FBS? there's rumors. There's a lot of rumors. I'm trying to avoid them. I'm trying to avoid the rumors. I'm trying to avoid the spoilers and everything like that. I I just I pre-ordered it. I pre-ordered it the day the pre-order was about, and uh, you know I'm trying to stay clear of all spoilers and everything like that. Yeah, I have it pre-ordered as well. I don't even know why, because I'm going to try and wait till the weekend and play it with everybody else. Like that's what I want to do. Yeah, that's not going to happen, dude. As soon as that shit hits live on Steam. That thing's being played. How many hours are you guys going to play this game over the opening weekend? Till it is done. <laughs> until it's done. <laughs> I shall not sleep until it is done. Yeah. I may, I may live stream it, but I'm not going to be interacting. Screw that. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, no. Play. If it's a group experience, like me and some subs, especially if I have guys in the stream who've beaten the game before, then we should be able to roll through it fairly quickly. And, uh, I'll and come in and be... give you the wrong you, advice. You, you're, looking, you're looking all excited for a puzzle game, but you want people to help you with the puzzles. I don't get that. It's yeah. not really, like, the experience of it, like, the way it kind of taunts you and shit, like, it just pushes your buttons. That's all I can, I mean, Yeah, like, just... like, most of the fun of a puzzle game is the whole, like, sit your controller down and look at the screen. It's like, huh. No, the not for me. The co-op thing excites me, like, being able to play with people on PC and PS3 and merge lobbies. And like just being able to co-op play as well, that is that just really excites me. That's really amazing. I love I love it when a game gets to a puzzle and I gotta stop and be like, hmm. And I, I can like break out a piece of paper or some shit and start figuring it out. <laughs> that reminds me of like Angry Birds on my freaking iPhone. That's one of those games that what? It, you guys you How? guys never play that. No, Birds, that, I banned that game in my house. <laughs> Angry Birds is awesome. I guess this is the wrong podcast <laughs> to talk about that. I don't even have a cell phone. <laughs> mm. No, but Portal, you'd like be like, okay, I'm done for today. I can't clear this level, and you'd close it half an hour later. You'd be opening it back up, being like, mm-hmm. I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna do it. Boop, 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 boop. I Alrighty. guess that's Pankin already, guys. Very good. All right.